Hello, in this video we're going to talk about the integral of a vector valued function. So let r of t be a function with three components, f of t i plus g of t j plus h of t k. Then the integral of r of t from t equals a to t equals b is, well it's the definite integral from a to b of r of t dt and it's obtained by integrating each component function. In other words, in the first component, we'll have the integral from a to b of f of t dt. In the second component, we'll have the integral from a to b of g of t dt. In the third component, we'll have the integral from a to b of h of t dt. Okay, so let's look at an example. So here's our example. We want to compute the definite integral from 0 to pi over 6 of r of t dt, where r of t is given by the cube root of t i plus the square root of 1 plus 2 t j plus t times sine of t k. Well, according to our definition, the integral from a to b of r of t dt, that's going to be given by the integral from 0 to pi over 6, cube root of t, and I'm going to write that as t to the 1 3rd power, i, and I'm going to change the a to the b, I mean we're working with particular values 0 to pi over 6, so we might as well put those in. Okay second component we will have the integral 0 to pi over 6. 1 plus 2t all to the 1 half power dt j plus the integral 0 to pi over 6 sine time excuse me e t times sine of t dt. Okay, so let's work on each of these pieces individually and then we'll put it all together. So first of all, let's do the integral from 0 to pi over 6 t to the 1 3rd dt. And for this integral here, we're going to need our generalized power rule. And what that says is it says the integral of x to the n dx equals 1 over n plus 1 x to the n plus 1 plus c provided n is not equal to negative 1. If it's negative 1 then it's the natural log absolute value. Again you could review those rules of integration if that was um, something that you would like to do and that's a good idea at this point to review any rules of integration because we will use them often in our course. Okay so let's apply the power rule to this example so we're looking at 1 over 1 plus 1 third, so that's 1 over 4 thirds, t to the 4 thirds power, and we're evaluating that 0 to pi over 6. In other words, that's 3 fourths pi over 6 to the 4 thirds minus 0, which is just 0. Okay, so I'm going to put a box around that because that's going to be very helpful for what we put on the i component. Now let's move on to our next integral. Our next integral is going to look like the integral from 0 to pi over 6, 1 plus 2t to the 1 half power dt. Now this is another power rule, but since this is a composite function in here, 1 plus 2t all raised to the 1 half power, we will need u substitution. So we'll use u substitution. Okay, let's take a moment to write that down. We'll let u be the inner little function which is 1 plus 2t. du dt is 2. Well, we're not really interested in du dt. What we are interested in is what is du equal to? Well, du equals 2 dt. I'm not really interested in a 2 dt. I don't have a 2 in my integrand. 
I do have a dt though, so let's divide both sides by 2. And so what this tells us is that 1 half du equals dt, and that's going to be great. I can substitute that right back into my problem. Also why I'm here, let's note that when t equals 0, u equals 1 plus 2 times 0, which is 1. Also, when t equals pi over 6, u equals 1 plus 2 times pi over 6, which equals 1 plus pi over 3. Okay, so let's put those pieces in. We have the integral from u equals 1 up to u equals 1 plus pi over 3 u to the one-half power, and now instead of a dt, recall that dt equals one-half du. Okay, so if we work this out, we will have a one-half way out in front. The integral of u to the one-half is going to be two-thirds u to the three-halves power, and we're evaluating that from one up to one plus pi over 3. Okay, let me make a little bit of space. Okay, so once we work through this, we will cancel the two, so we have a one-third out in front, and now we have 1 plus pi over 3 to the 3 halves power minus 1 to 3 halves power, which is just 1. Okay, so that is an important result. We could put a box around that piece. Okay, lastly, we need to go and do our integral from 0 to pi over 6, t times sine t dt. So we'll do the integral from 0 to pi over 6, t times sine t dt. And for this problem, uh, integration by parts is going to be a great strategy. And the reason why this is a great strategy is notice that we have a product in the integrand. Right? And integration by parts is very much like a product rule for integrals. So integration by parts says we're going to pick a u and we're going to pick a dv. And we want u to be something that gets easier or simpler as we differentiate. And so a good choice for u would be t. That implies that du equals 1 dt. Now dv will be everything else that's left over. And so dv will be the sine t dt. And when we integrate both sides, so if you want to think about this as we're integrating both sides, What does that give us? Well, on the left-hand side, we have v, and on the right-hand side, the integral of sine, that would be a negative cosine t. Okay, so integration by parts says the integral of u dv equals uv minus the integral of v du. Okay, and in this case, our u was t, the dv was sine t dt, so that was our original problem. And so we can find the antiderivative by working through u times v, which is a negative t cosine t, minus the integral of v du. So the integral of v, which is negative cosine t dt. So we can make this minus minus a plus, and remember this is a definite integral for us. We're looking at 0 to pi over 6, and so we can put our definite integral and limits of integration right into the problem. Okay, let's keep going here. So we've got a negative pi over 6 times cosine pi over 6 minus 0. Integrating, we have sine t evaluated from 0 to pi over 6. Now, it's very important that you're familiar with your trig ratios. We use them quite frequently in Calculus 3. 
So cosine of pi over 6, as you recall, that will be root 3 over 2. And that's something you should know without the use of a calculator. So in front, we have a negative pi over 6 times root 3 over 2. Over here, evaluating sine of pi over 6. Well, sine of pi over 6. Or 30 degrees, sine of 30 degrees, that turns out to be 1 half. So we have 1 half minus sine of 0, 0. So final answer here would be a negative square root of 3 pi all over 12 plus 1 half. Okay, so we find our final answer is 3 fourths times pi over 6 to the 4 thirds power i minus 1 third, let me write that a little bit neater there, minus 1 third square brackets, parentheses, 1 plus pi over 3 to 3 halves power minus 1, j, plus negative root 3 pi over 12 plus 1 half.